obedience to give and to feed nations. Hallelujah. What an honor and a blessing it is to do that. And so we are in talking about compassion. We have another um, message today, Compassion, the Birthplace of Miracles, Part 2. And so if you did not hear Part 1, you can uh, find that on probably YouTube, um, on our YouTube channel. And so how many know when things are dark in the earth, if we're not careful as a child of God, we can lose compassion. Compassion for our first love, Jesus, compassion for one another, compassion for the lost, the hurting. And so the Holy Spirit instructed me to teach on compassion. So that's what we're doing. And um, we thank God for his tangible presence in this place and for the power of the Holy Spirit. So I pray that God is mending hearts and touching lives today, opening up our understanding in the name of Jesus about this spirit of compassion that we need. In Jesus name so Holy Spirit just speak through these books of clay today father a word that will transform your people and not just go in and bounce off but let the seed of God go deep into their hearts today father touch those that are watching that are listening father God I pray for impartations father God we cover uh, the recordings we cover this house in the blood of Yeshua we thank you father for miracles healing signs wonders salvations Lord God we give you the glory for it in Jesus name and so we're going to go to Matthew 9, but first we're going to talk about um, the word compassion. Thank you. And so the Greek word for compassion means sympathy, charity, uh, fellow, for your fellow man, feeling mercy, being merciful, right? And, it, and the deeper meaning to that is to have uh, your bowels yearn. So that's a little deeper than just having a little sympathy. It means down deep inside of you, right? Way down deep inside of you. There's a yearning to bring help to somebody. There's a yearning to alleviate suffering. So the greatest example of compassion we know is Jesus Christ. Amen. He's the model of everything we do, how we live our lives, how we interact with one another. It's Jesus. And so that to, to have unity with the Father, we got to be one one with the Lord and his nature and the Holy Spirit, right? And so, in Matthew 9, 36, <clears throat> let's walk the word today. It says, seeing the people, it said, Jesus, let's go up a little bit to, um, let's go to verse 31. This is after Jesus healed the blind. It says, And they went out and spread the news about Jesus throughout all the land. And then when they were going out, a mute demon-possessed man was brought to him. After the demon was cast out, the mute man spoke. The crowds were amazed and were saying, Nothing like this has ever been seen in Israel. But the Pharisees were saying, He casts out demons only by Beelzebub, the ruler of demons, and Jesus was going through all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every kind of disease and every kind of sickness. Now look what it says in 36. All of this is going on and Jesus is moving about in the earth and it says, seeing the people, Jesus felt compassion for them because they were distressed and dispirited like sheep without a shepherd. And he says to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Therefore beseech the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into his harvest field. So we need workers full of compassion like never before today. Everything that Jesus did, the Bible, when, he, when it says he healed, he worked miracles, he was moved with this spirit of compassion. And so the definition of compassion is, means that you have a sympathetic consciousness of others' distress, okay? But it doesn't just stop with seeing it and being aware of it, but you have a desire to alleviate it. And so the meaning of compassion is to recognize the suffering of others and then take action to help. So it's mercy in action. So I'm just going through a few little things from last week, and then we'll go into part two. But compassion, okay, it embodies a tangible expression of love for those who are suffering. And so 
So it's more than empathy, it is action. So one is not, not just a hear of what's going on in someone's life, doesn't just see it, but they're a doer of bringing change. And you use what you got, right? You use what you got, and you have to understand that real compassion, because we house God's Spirit, it's a moving of the Holy Spirit in a distressful situation. And sometimes we don't have nothing in our hand but a prayer. <laughs> sometimes we don't have nothing to give but a word, right? But when the power of compassion and the Holy Spirit is working in us and through us, that prayer or that word can bring supernatural into that person's life and it brings change right because you have a yearning on the inside of you to see something happen something good happen to that person and so the latin root word for compassion is p-a-t-i which means to suffer and the prefix com means with it means to suffer with someone now our soul don't like that our flesh won't like that right but Jesus was moved with it. He felt the, 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 he had a deep feeling inside for the hurting of humanity. And he was moved with that and he brought relief to them. Hallelujah. So we have the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. And so it means to suffer with. The connection of suffering with another person brings compassion beyond sympathy. We heard that last week. It brings compassion beyond a sympathy into the next realm of empathy, right? But it's even more than empathy. Empathy is the ability to relate to another person's pain as your own. So sometimes we go through something, we can relate with somebody that's in that situation, right? That's good. We should be able to do that. But it is not active in bringing any change. We can say, oh, I, I relate, I relate with you. I, ha, you know, I can understand your pain, right? But compassion gets involved. You see that it takes it a step further, and that's what Jesus did. He got involved. So compassion will get involved when others keep their distance from those who are suffering. Compassion prompts us to act on their behalf. And I'm sure if I say, lift your hands, many of you in here, you have been moved with compassion before. And when you're moved with compassion, it costs you something. <laughs> it costs you time, it costs you energy, it costs you resources, emotional suffering, right? It'll cost you something because it is mercy in action. So some equate compassion with kindness or just being soft or weak. Sometimes people will, and I've had this happen to me because I have a lot of mercy and compassion, right? So I've had people misjudge my mercy or compassion as weakness, okay? The devil is a liar. There's power in compassion, right? And the spirit of gentleness that we don't teach about much as a fruit of Holy Spirit the spirit of gentleness is power under submission. That's pretty powerful, isn't it? You know, that's one of the fruits of Holy Spirit, gentleness, kindness, goodness, right? All of those things. So don't let anybody uh, misread you and think, or don't misread yourself and think that your compassion is weak. No, your compassion is power. You need to understand that compassion is power. Compassion is what causes me to travail for people. Without, the, without uh, compassion, there's no travail. There's no prayer without it, right? So compassion causes me to pray for people. And God will put a specific people group in your destiny and connected to your purpose. And many times it's what we come out of because we can empathize with that. But because we have the Holy Spirit, <laughs> he takes us deeper than, than using empathy. He, he begins to cause us to yearn for people that have been through some suffering. And a lot of times, it's the same suffering we came out of. And so your mis misery can become a great ministry in the hands of God if you allow it. But you've got to allow the spirit of compassion to flow through you. Amen? Because you, we're going to talk about blocking it up and what it does for your health and everything today. And so compassion requires immense courage. 
You mean it takes courage? Yes, it does. It takes courage to get out of your comfort zone. It takes courage to go beyond where you're comfortable. See, compassion goes past your, where you're comfortable. It's true. I can be comfortable just to, you know, throw something at somebody or, or go along, whatever, and just give a little something, something here that didn't cost me nothing, right? It wasn't really a sacrifice. But compassion brings a sacrifice. Compassion takes it another step further <laughs> where you're actually sacrificing something. Jesus did it. All the times that Jesus was tired. He was tired, y'all. He was, he was, yes, fully God, but he was also man in a flesh. So you can't say, well, he don't know what it was like to be tired. He slept. He stayed up all night in prayer. The Bible says he was hungry. When he got done fasting, he was hungry, really hungry. <laughs> so he understands these things. You know, that he couldn't get in a car and drive to where he was going. This man had to walk, right? It's different than today. But still yet, he extended past his earthly limitation. He always stayed connected to his father. And he could tap into the supernatural. There's a supernatural grace for those that want the spirit of compassion. And what I love about the father is he, if you are faithful with the little, he'll make you ruler over much. And so if you want God to use you in bringing healing, because Jesus was moved with compassion and he healed them. He was moved with compassion and he did what? Miracles. He was moved with compassion and he fed them. Some of the greatest charities started because people had a compassion for people that were in need. And God continues to funnel monies through these people because they have compassion. Praise the Lord, right? So we need more compassion from the Holy Spirit. You always, you can never have enough. Amen. And so the spirit of compassion will flow through you by the spirit of God. That's the power behind it. It's, there's a power behind it. And the first thing you have to do is you have to allow yourself to be sensitive to the awareness of other suffering. Yeah. Okay, number one, you have to allow yourself to be sensitive to the, uh, to the awareness of others that are suffering. So that means that, like we said last week, you don't just put your head in the sand. You don't just take a glimpse and look away. I don't want to look at that. It's too ugly or it's too, it's too painful. I've had people say that's too painful to, to get involved. That's the devil is a liar, right? As you're led by the Spirit, you must get involved. Amen? And so you have to allow yourself. Ask the Holy Spirit to wash your eyes. See, we've become desensitized to darkness. We've become desensitized to suffering. It's true of others. Where it means we see so much of it that we think, well, it's always going to be that way. So there's nothing we can do to stop it. There's nothing we can do to eliminate it, right? And so we don't do anything. But that's not the way of what? The kingdom. When, when Jesus, when he said, don't let these people leave, because they might faint on the way. And the disciples like Jesus, we don't have enough to take care of these needs. They were basically looking at their natural ability. You see, their natural resources. Just, just let them go, you know, whatever. We just don't have enough. But Jesus found somebody that had a sack lunch. Somebody, and it was a child. Imagine that, right? That came and gave him a sack lunch. And he blessed it and he broke it and it multiplied because he had compassion that they would faint on the way. He's healing them. He's doing all these things, but he was moved and yearned. He desired them to have some food. He didn't want them to faint on the way home, okay? So he allowed himself to feel so as a body of Christ, we get very, and we talked about that last week, a religious spirit doesn't have compassion. A religious spirit is, is too busy doing some stuff. 
right, to see what's really going on. And so we have to allow God to give us eyes to have. Open our eyes that we can see like you. Open our eyes that we can see like you. Um, I, just, I just saw this picture. It's in my living room, and my oldest son painted a beautiful picture of an Egyptian market. And all the, the people were busy in the marketplace, and, um, you know, people were in and out of shops, beautiful shops in a big city, you know, and everybody was just busy doing what they were doing. And you cannot see unless you really see, but there's this little uh, boy sitting in the corner of the doorway with this little monkey on his shoulder, and he was, he was a little homeless boy. And he was sitting right in the midst of the market, of this rich market, all this stuff going on and people having a good time, and there sits this little boy, you know, as a reminder of what's really going on in this picture here, right? That's how we are sometimes. We're so busy doing and going and this and this and that, and we don't see as people of the kingdom what's right in front of our eyes, what's sitting right there. Because you have to really look to see. You hear me by the Spirit, right? You're hearing me. I can feel the Holy Spirit. He's trying to help us. So one has to be allow themselves to be sensitive. Number two, you must allow yourself to be moved by sympathy, to have the ability to understand what is going on from different perspectives. Hmm, that helps us too. But you have to move beyond that and get involved, right? Because remember, we're not stopping with empathy. We're going further than we've been before. Amen? And so the next thing is you have to, ha you have, to have an ability to tolerate distress. A lot of people don't want to get involved because of the cost that it costs you, right? Right? Distress means you have to be able to tolerate. It's, it's, distress means that people are sometimes in great pain. There's anxiety. There's sorrow. There's a, a active physical or mental suffering. Extreme, uh, extreme misfortune. And so you have to be able, when you step out to show compassion and you begin to feel, you got to put the soul on the side. Right? Because remember, I said it's going to cost you some emotional stuff. It's, you may have a sleepless night or two because you have reached out in compassion. And I find when you reach out in compassion, there's an exchange and you do begin to feel something. Mm -hmm. But in the Western church, many times because we're self absorbed, come on. We're self-absorbed. That's why we repent. We're, we're a, we live a lifestyle of repenting for that. Self-absorbed, selfishness, self-awareness. It's all about me, spirit, right? So we, we know that there is spiritual narcissism where it's about me. And when that happens, we don't want to get involved with distressful situations because it's going gonna, it's gonna to cost me something, but not children of the kingdom. Remember? So you have, to, you have to be careful because you're born again. You have his spirit, but you have to be careful that you don't shift over here into the religious spirit. A religious spirit. It's so easy in the Western church to be religious, right? Because it's all about an organization instead of an organism. It's not about movement. It's not about feeling and taking on and helping and serving and loving and giving. It's about me. And so thank you, Jesus, for helping us. And the next thing is, number four, you have to have a non-judgmental attitude regarding what is going on. Because you all know it, and that's one of the blockers we'll get to later. We can get judgmental just by looking at something right that's not like us you know and we can make inner vows and judgments concerning people that are suffering true help us father it happens we get religious and we think things and we say things out of our flesh or out of something that we learned something we grew up in right 
And so we don't have compassion for people groups. We don't have compassion for certain situations and things because we've prejudged that situation. But we were told by Jesus not to judge like that. Have you walked in their shoes? Did life do to you what happened to them? Right? So you can't judge one another and have real compassion. So you have to be discerning by the Spirit of God. And we have to separate people from situations. Come on. You've got to separate the people from the Spirit in order to have compassion. You do. You've got to separate it. We discern by the Spirit, right? Because we want to alleviate some things. And many times people won't even let you in their world unless you can touch them in that way. And once you begin to touch them in that way, then that can open the door for you to lead people to Jesus, <laughs> for you to demonstrate his love. And that's what compassion does. It demonstrates the love of Christ. Amen? Thank you, God. Go to James 2. James chapter 2, verse 14. It says, What use is it, my brethren, if anyone says he has faith, but he has no works. Can that faith save him? He said, if a brother or sister is without clothing and in need of daily food, and one of you says to him, go in peace, be warmed and be filled, and yet you do not give them what is necessary for their body, what use is that? He said, even so faith, if it has no works, is dead, being by itself. But someone will, may say, well say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without the works and I will show you my faith by my works. He says, you believe that God is one, you do well and the demons also believe and they shudder. He says, but you are willing to recognize you foolish fellow that faith without works is useless, right? So we have to be an active doer. He says, was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered up Isaac, his son, on the altar? He says, you see that faith was working with his works. And as a result of the works, faith was perfected. Hallelujah, right? He says, and the scripture was also fulfilled, which says, and Abraham believed God and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. He said, you see that a man is justified by works and not by faith alone. If you're, if, he said, in the same way, was not Rahab the harlot also justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out by another way? For just as the body without the spirit is dead, so also faith without works is dead. Hmm. So God is speaking to us. We were created to be life givers right you house the spirit of god so you're created to bring change in the earth <laughs> you're created to do that you have creative power on the inside of you no matter what you go through you house the spirit of god and you have power if you're born again you've got power you may not operate it in it because of many reasons right but you should be operating in some power as a child of god so you were created to be a life giver and you were also created to be a resource center for humanity. <laughs> so you have a resource in you called the Holy Spirit, right? That has creative power to do supernatural things. Some of you, if you would just get in that place with God, you could pull some things down out of heaven to be a resource center. You could pull it out of the realm of the spirit and release it into the earth. How did Jesus take a little tiny basket lunch and feed 4,000 plus kids and, and wives? How, could, how can that happen? We know that can't happen, but supernaturally things can happen. Just because things are dark in the earth and you don't see things the way you want to see it, right? Don't discount the supernatural power of God. Don't give in to the lies of the enemy in this season that God is not moving and not working. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by who? Christ Jesus. I'm in him. Right? And so in the, in the kingdom of God, it's not enough just to have enough for me and mine. 
See, that, that's that religious poverty spirit. No, it's not enough. I need some to give. I need something to alleviate some suffering. I need to help feed some folks. I need to help do the works of love and compassion that Jesus did. Amen? And look at the faith in this room. Look at how many resource centers are sitting here. We have, <laughs> wow, right? <laughs> we are a resource center. But if you settle and you, you get in fear, that's a blocker. Fear is a blocker. So you were created to be a life giver. Let's go to 1 John 3. See, the Holy Spirit will speak to you. He knows what you have in your hand. And he knows he's living inside of you. And he knows those that will let him flow through them. John 3, 1 John 3, 16 says, We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for our brethren. But whoever has this world's goods and sees his brother in need and closes his heart against him, how does the love of God abide in him? He said, little children, let us not love with word or with tongue, but in deed and truth. He says, we will know this by, he said, we will know this, that we are of the truth and will assure our hearts before him. He said, in whatever our heart condemns us, for God is greater than our heart and knows all things. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God. So there is a confidence I have before God when I'm a doer of the word. There's a confidence that I have before God whenever I open up compassion for other people. The closest place, I heard it said this, and I believe the close, you want to get closest to the Father's heart? Walk in compassion. Look at Jesus. <laughs> you want to be so close to Abba? Compassion will get you there. You can be a conduit of that, the spirit of compassion. James 4, 5 says, or do you think scripture says without reason that he jealously longs for the spirit he has caused to dwell in us? So that means he purchased us, right? And so he's dwelling in us and he is jealous for us. He wants to see some things manifested in your life. So, so Jesus, the greatest example of compassion, showed compassion for us, right? He, he loved us and saved us before we knew him, right? So all of those things. And so Matthew 10, 42, another scripture. And whoever in the name of a disciple gives to one of these little ones even a cup of cold water to drink, he said, truly I say to you, he shall not lose his reward. Hmm. Simplicity, isn't it? It's being moved out of selfishness into the area of giving into the area of of releasing love and compassion to other people right it could it, it moving into helps ministry <laughs> people need help today right that's showing compassion you're alleviating some what some suffering you're helping people but there's hindrances to uh, compassion flowing through people today and even in the church right especially we know in the world but in the church I'm speaking about church people here there's hindrances to compassion flowing through and the first thing is an unhealed soul unhealed soul right past painful experiences such as maybe you were bullied maybe there's shame maybe there's rejection uh, neglect all of these things so when we have an unhealed soul if we're not careful the unhealed soul limits us from moving with the Holy Spirit doesn't it we all know because we do deliverance in here and so we need to get our soul healed of past experiences that have blocked up our compassion sometimes we've reached out to help people and people maybe rejected our help right or maybe they took advantage of our compassion. That's on them. But if you've done it with the spirit of love and you've done it by the leading of the Holy Spirit, you will get a reward from the Father. Remember, we're not to do our good deeds to get a pat on the back here because Jesus says, and you've got it. Man gave you a reward. <laughs> 
But the hidden things, the things that you do that nobody sees, God will bless that. God will reward you on the day of judgment. Hallelujah. The things you sow, the places you go, that nobody will go. The little things, those little things mean a lot to people, right? That's why the body has to be fitly joined together because one person behind a pulpit cannot see everything. We can't do everything. God didn't intend for us to do that, but he gave the church a body. Hallelujah. They gave the church a body. So these things in the soul can affect us on either end of compassion giving it or receiving it many times people have walls up and they you know especially when they've been hurt or broken or betrayed they don't want your compassion give it anyway <laughs> give it anyway because you're not giving it to get something remember compassion is not after anything <laughs> compassion is to give because jesus gave it do you think all the multitudes that followed Jesus in man's eyes were worthy of his compassion? Come on. How many times did disciples and religious people try and uh, rebuke Jesus or, you know, talk crazy to him because he was showing people compassion that they didn't think deserved it? But that's not the way of the kingdom, right? We were blessed by the blesser. Because we've been grafted into this powerful kingdom. And we have a king. <laughs> and we do what the king does. Hallelujah. Don't you love it? The kingdom has a king. Right? And he is our model. You're always going to hear me talk about the king. That's how I see my Jesus. He's king. You know, everybody has a way. You know, he's a lamb or he's this or he's that. He's king to me. He's king. And he needs to get what he desires for me. Right? It's not, it's not a democracy in the kingdom. We have a king, and he has an order, and he has a way that he moves and he flows, and we have to get in sync with what he's doing. Amen? So these things can affect us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. You're showing us some things today. So it takes an anointing from God, and we will see positive results. Even if someone re refuses it, keep giving it. Keep showing it. Because the anointing of God, when you're moved by the Holy Spirit and the love of God is working through you, you've touched some hearts. There's seeds that are being sown inside someone that will bring change. Amen? It's not your job to see the harvest. Come on. We want to see the harvest today. Well, Lord, I done did this and I did that and I did that. Where's the harvest at? That's none of your business. <laughs> it's none of your concern right it's not because you've released the seed one plants one waters but the father brings the increase so many people are trapped up in a lie thinking because they didn't see nothing last time they did that so we ain't gonna do it this time that's the devil the devil is speaking to you and lying to you and he's robbing you of a harvest sometimes some of us we won't see a harvest till we get on the other side right we won't know and then some we we'll see here some we'll see there we, that's the father's business yeah. that's what i love it's his business i'm in him so it's his business how this thing works out right and so hindrances fear is the number one blocker of you showing compassion giving to others fear fear of the loss of something remember i'm, I'm gonna lose something if i give that Right? I'm going to lose some, uh, some sleep if I take on that burden of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Come on, think about it. Um, Self-preservation, self-absorbed. Fear of, fear of losing that. Compassion can cost you much. We said that. And so fear is the number one thing. God speaks. Remember, when the Holy Spirit moves on you and he speaks, there's power. There's power behind your movement. When he speaks, there's power behind the movement. So the results are up to who? God. Just like when you release a prophetic word, you know God gave it to you, you release it. Your job is to be the voice, right? You're not responsible when it lands, 
when it lands on the heart they got to do with it what they do you can't you can pray for them but you can't make those things happen that's we're natural we're a piece of clay we're just a, we're, we have a treasure in us called the holy spirit and so when i'm led by him in these acts and i'm led by him in these prayers and all these things he does the work that takes the pressure off you and me it takes the pressure off right that's why, that's why Christians are false burden, false responsibility, false all this stuff, and we're weighted down, and we're no good because we're carrying too much baggage, amen? So God releases us from that. The results are his when you do works of compassion, amen? The next blocker, first was fear. The next one is a bitter spirit, bitter, bitterness, unforgiveness. What does it bring? Distrust. I don't trust anybody. And most of the time when we teach it, you don't trust God. You don't trust God. He's wanting to release some compassion and do something, but I distrust. I have offenses. So that spirit of unforgiveness, it fosters what? Unloving, unnurturing attitudes. You see that in Christians that say they're believers, but they're unloving, they're unnurturing full of offenses, all burdened down. They don't have any compassion for anyone. That's, that's that religious spirit we talked about. And the next thing is a judgmental attitude. So fear, unforgiveness, judgmental attitude, where God is moving on your heart, but because you got some issues in your soul toward people groups, right? Or you've been raised up and taught wrong, right? And those things, and maybe you've been hurt by someone and you didn't get healed and so those things can cause you to make a judgment on what you see by your natural carnal eyesight and if you do that you've done canceled out your act of compassion and the truth is when you release that compassion to them there's something coming back to you from God some healing come on <laughs> there's something that comes back to his people when they obey him and so, but the anointing of God, Isaiah 10, 27, breaks the yoke of bondage. And so the spirit of compassion, because Jesus was moved with compassion by the spirit, he moves on us, I believe, every day. Because there's so much darkness in the world. You can't tell me that the Holy Spirit is not speaking to you about something. Scroll down your feed. You can see all kinds of garbage, right? You can see all kinds of stuff. A little thing, and then we'll get back into compassion. This uh, Netflix movie on cuties, we curse that in the name of Jesus. The devil is a liar. Some of you don't know what it is, but it, I, I clicked on the trailer to see what all this, of course, you can tell by the pictures what it is, but I'm telling you, there, that was the strongest witchcraft seduction pull I have ever felt in the spirit watching anything I'm telling you as I stand here it is a demonic assignment to legalize pedophilia it is a demonic assignment to desensitize the church the body of Christ to cause that to come into being legalized and you say, well, I never heard of it. Well, you're going to hear about it because it is quite a stir right now. And yes, this stuff has been going on. Hello, we know it. But now the wickedness is in your face, church. It's not hiding behind the closet anymore. It's right up and personal. These little babies are 9 to 11. 9 to 11 years old. It makes, when you, when you just see it, you, I'm telling you, we pray, we've been praying, and I know many, many people are praying, praying concerning this because it is causing this thing to go to another level in the spirit realm. And so this is a, this is a direct attack against the children. And so those parents, what has happened when this, take, this stuff is all going on, they have sacrificed their daughters to Satan on an altar. It's like it's child sacrifice. And so you have to see it by the spirit realm. 
not what you're looking at in the natural. Well, this stuff's always been around. I've heard people, you know, uh, other pastors and leaders say, oh, it's always been there. Never this ugly out where we can see it, right? So God is opening our eyes right now. He's opening our eyes. So don't be desensitized because of the darkness in the world. Don't allow that to just let it pass by your feed. Begin to speak into that darkness. He says we can call those things that are not as though they are. We can curse those things in the name of Jesus. Cancel your Netflix. Let every Christian in the world cancel it. Make them go bankrupt. Come on. Don't support that stuff, right? Help us, Lord. Don't be desensitized. Amen. So you can lose your compassion like that. You can fall in and get what? Complacent. We get complacent and we get real uh, carnal, complacent. And it's just sarah, sarah, whatever happened will happen. No, we're still in the earth realm, y'all. We're still here. We still here. Jesus said to occupy till I come. Occupy doesn't mean being locked up, shut up somewhere, putting your head in the sand and not looking at what's going on around us. There's people that need Jesus. I think about all the poor souls that will watch that movie and be hooked and have a desire to sleep with children. It will happen. we covered. We have the Holy Spirit. But think about the world, the people that don't have God. Where's the covering? Where is it? There is none. And so because of the witchcraft connected to that assignment, I'm telling you, it will hook some people. So we need to be praying and covering and declaring that thing get uprooted. Amen. The devil is a liar. Hallelujah. Help me, Jesus. So people who don't have compassion for others will not have compassion for themselves. Let's talk about that. Because many times if people cannot operate in compassion, okay, they're self-critical. You can have self-rejection, self-hatred issues. There's an insecurity. It's like, what do I have to give? I don't have nothing. So you're hard on yourself, and you're not going to be able to release compassion to others, okay? And so we need to work on that. These are unable to release compassion because they don't believe they have anything of value to give other people. The devil is a liar. You have the Holy Spirit. You can love because love is in you. God is what? Love, right? And so you have power within you. Let's talk about health benefits of compassion. Compassion will make one's life have meaning and purpose. Studies on compassion. It's very true. It brings health to your body. <laughs> Showing compassion brings health. Proverbs 22, 9, it says, He who is generous will be blessed, for he gives some of his food to the poor. Acts 2, 44. Let's walk some word here. Thank you, Father. God is good. See, he's waking us up. Don't let, because things are dark, don't let that, don't let that rob you of being a blessing to other people. In Acts chapter 2, God's uniting his church in Jesus' name. 44, it says, And all those who had believed were together and had all things in common, and they began selling their property and possessions and were sharing them with all, as anyone might have need. He said, Day by day, continuing with one mind in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they were taking their meals together with gladness, sincerity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord was adding to their number day by day those who were being saved. And so all things in common. That means that it wasn't just seeing there was needs, that they went a step further. There was a unity, wasn't it? There was a love that was spread abroad in his church, and he's bringing that back. Acts 20, 35 says, In everything I showed you that by working hard in this manner, you must help the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus that he himself said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. And so 
I was looking up the health benefits and there's brain studies in the University of uh, British Columbia and some other places. It showed when people donate to charity, now this is even in the world, okay? When people donate to charities, the, the brain pleasure area, when they monitor them, lights up. This is in the world. We have the Holy Spirit, right? And so acts of kindness, generosity, and cooperation spreads throughout, and it is very contagious. You see that when there's an atrocity come in a community, what happens when people begin to help, people begin to show compassion, it begins to spread, doesn't it? <laughs> it spreads like fire. It's good. It begins to spread, right? And it causes people to have good health. It says that compassion opens the door to good health by living longer. People that are compassionate live longer lives. You're a life giver. Remember that. But when you give, you get it back. People that have compassion, it will alleviate anxiety. I tell people, you feel, you feel down, go do, some kind, go, yeah. go do some good deeds. Go find somewhere to serve and something will happen to you. It, and the next thing it does, it lifts depression. Yeah. And I know this to be true. Yeah. When, when we do a lot of serving and we go out, I'm telling you what, the joy of the Lord overtakes us when we give. <laughs> it, it makes you feel so good to give and to help and to show compassion. The next thing it does, it strengthens your immune system. Interesting, isn't it? That's what it says. Living longer alleviates anxiety, lifts depression, strengthens immunity. So our brain can be strengthened like a muscle. It's true. It can be healed. It can be strengthened. And one of the ways is showing compassion because Jesus said we are made in the image and likeness of God. Right? God is a giver. <laughs> God is a God of compassion. God is a God of love and mercy. We have him. And so when our spirit, because remember, you have the well of Yeshua. Isaiah 12, well is in me. Sometimes my soul doesn't let it work right, right? And I have to command my soul to go down in the spirit man to rise up. But this well of Jesus wants to flow out of us. And when it does, something happens to me. Your whole mood will shift, right? When you begin to show compassion and love to other people. And so we have this Holy Spirit who is full of compassion and power. 1 Peter 4.10 says, each, each, each one of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in various forms. And think about this. I'm going to go back to that for just a minute. Because depression, and we know that can be clinical and people need healing, absolutely. But I, but I believe most of it is a spirit, a spirit of heaviness, right? And what does that do? It causes us to be self-absorbed. Depression is, is an idol. It's like self is the idol. That's all I, it's all about what? Me. And so when you began to shift out of you and began to give to others, began to love others, began to show compassion... It, it brings you off the throne. Yeah. All right? It's, I'm telling you, this stuff will work. This stuff will work. Let's, uh, Zechariah chapter 7, verse 9. And I wrote it out, 9 and 10. It says, This is what the Lord Almighty said. Administer true justice. Show mercy and compassion to one another. He said, Do not oppress the widow or the fatherless. He said, the foreigner or the poor do not plot evil against each other. And so the Jesus compassion prompts us, okay, to act and to be merciful in love, to bring what? Healing. That's what he did. He moved with compassion and he healed. See, a burden can come on you when someone is sick in your midst. When someone is suffering, the burden of the Lord will come. And you will reach out and you will lay hands on the sick and they will get better. It's, it's the Bible, right? You, when you move in action, when you feel the yearning of God in a situation, there's an anointing upon you. <laughs> because you have the Holy Spirit. Just like when you sow or you give something, 
When, when you get the unction of the Holy Spirit, right, and you sow a seed of some kind, whatever it is, you're, you're giving something, you feel it and you release it, there's an anointing on it. There's power connected to the seed you sow. Praise God. Remember, it's supernatural. Giving is supernatural. Hallelujah. And so that Jesus' compassion prompts us to act and to be merciful in love, healing, and to rescue people out of darkness and bring them into the light. You need to cry out for a compassion for souls, for the lost. Because I'm telling you, the Bible says at the end times, our love of many will wax cold. And, he, and he's telling the truth, right? Because it's real. The love has waxed cold, but not us. We're children of the kingdom. And then people operate in false compassion, which is what? Void of real love. It's more about works. It's not about the, the spirit of compassion behind it. So we need God. We need the Lord, the Holy Spirit to come. And we're going to pray that the Holy Spirit goes in and last week there was a powerful impartation and the holy spirit came and we could feel we could feel that couldn't we and we're gonna feel him today because he desires that and so the word that was released let's go ahead and stand up the word that was released today thank you holy spirit if you know you have areas in your heart where you are you know you don't have compassion that you need and it could be those things that we talked about it could be fear it could be uh the fear of the loss of something or self-preservation fear of being rejected i don't know fear of fear of man right it could be many things it could be unforgiveness or offenses things that you have you know you're still carrying around and it could also be just being judgmental of people groups you need to repent for that You've got to repent for that. So, Father, we just thank you. Make an altar right where you're at right now. Everybody has something to give. Did you have something before we begin? Come on, hon. Just begin to pray in the Spirit. We thank you, Jesus. How many of you ever heard of the uh, parable or the analogy of the frog in the boiling pot of water? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some. Some have not. Basically, the analogy is humanity is the frog. Or you just picture yourself as the frog. She's talking about desensitizing of the, of the human race. Thank you, Lord. About this uh, pedophilia. They're trying to legalize it in California and all this other stuff. It's just trying to destroy our children and their future. But robbing them of, of their childhood. But... The, the, the analogy is you have a pot of water, and if you bring it to a boil, you throw the frog in it, he's going to jump out. Mm-hmm. But if you put the frog in it tempered water, basically room temperature water, it doesn't sense the change, doesn't know, but then you turn the burner on. Mm-hmm. And as the temperature rises, the frog adjusts. Nothing's wrong. Nothing's happening. Such a minute adjustment. Nothing's wrong. Nothing's happening. And at the end end of it, basically, it senses no danger. And it's boiled alive. Because it keeps making the adjustments to its outside surroundings. And as the world continues to get darker... There's also another analogy we've done when we were youth ministers, and I've seen it done by other, other pastors, so we weren't the first ones. We'd actually seen it done. You got a person standing over there that represents heaven. You got a person that stands over there that represents hell, and you got the world and a Christian, two more, two more people. The world goes a little closer to hell. But to keep... Um, to, to get people in, to draw them in, the church begins to act more like the world. So the church takes one step closer to hell. Do you start seeing? Yeah. And as the world continues, mm-hmm. the church follows because they want to be their friend Jesus. and gain. That's not how you show light. That is not how you show the light of God. 
you do not comp that's compromising the pot is getting hotter the water is getting to the boiling point and you are dying and you don't even realize it in James chapter 1 it talks about men being tempted humanity being tempted God does not tempt man this whole thing with Netflix and cuties and Netflix is just one of thousands I'm sure you know their stuff traded on the dark web daily millions of files that's just one is it's just it's this has not something new as Jeanette was saying it's it's been around the only reason that something has the only reason things have looked like it's oh my gosh it's escalating no it's because everybody's got a everybody's a cinematographer now everybody videos you are the frog in the pot of boiling water if you stand there with lack of compassion as she's talking about you're really I mean, if you can't tell I'm a little peeved at the devil people that <laughs> yes people that stand there and just video somebody being beat or any other atrocity you are part of the problem the lack of God is not in you or the love of God is not in you lack of God is definitely in you but sin comes in as a temptation I'll read it so I don't mess up God's word <laughs> James 1.13, we'll start right there. Are we still live streaming? Yes. yes. Sweet. <laughs> James 1.5. Is that what I said? 1.5, 1.3? I don't know. 1.13. People pay attention. I like it. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. Yes, I'm reading King James. But every man is tempted, this verse 14, when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Well, to use Netflix and their little cutie movie or show or whatever it is. Man being drawn away of his own lusts and enticed. Verse 15, then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Do not err, my brethren, or my beloved brethren. That's how subtle it is, the pot of boiling water. You cannot be a, a Christian in this modern world and be part of the world then you have no salt you have no light mm -hmm. you are no different than the world and God uh, through this whole pandemic plandemic whatever you want to call it God is exposing a lot yes. a lot so even in the bad God uses the bad to bring forth Thank you, Lord. what he really, basically he's showing a lot of, he's waking some people up, I'll put it that way. Now we'll, now we'll go to Isaiah. You didn't know I was going to preach part two, did you? It was a short message today. <laughs> yeah, Isaiah 513. I'm back there making notes, man. I'm just like, oh, man. Isaiah 5, 13. Thank you, Lord. And Vicky's like, uh oh, he's getting long winded. <laughs> Help us, Jesus. But basically, it all, it's all tying together. The frog in the pot of water. When sin yes. conceives, it bringeth forth death in the end. And I was, had this discussion with Hannah on the way in. You know, we're talking about how people you know they're just after certain things in life and and hell enlarges herself daily 
She's like, what? I said, yeah. Hell is known as a female, so don't, don't be offended by that. Wisdom is known as in a feminine also, right, so no. don't. We're not, it's not here to make cases against any gender. But what I'm going to read is, therefore, verse 13, Isaiah 5, 13, therefore many people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. And therefore, honorable men are famished and their multitude dried up with thirst. Verse 14, therefore hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure and their glory and their multitude and their pomp and he that rejoiceth shall descend into it and he mean and the mean man shall be brought down and the mighty man shall be humbled and the eyes of the lofty shall be humbled but the Lord of hosts shall be exalted in judgment and God that is holy shall be sanctified in righteousness then the lambs sh- then shall the lambs feed after their manner and the waste places of fat one shall strangers eat woe unto them that draw iniquity with cords of vanity and sin as it were with a cart of rope anyway it just goes on and on and on woe woe <laughs> Synopsis, don't be the frog. Know your surroundings. Thank you, Lord. I like what Pastor Bertha, we were just sitting back there chit chatting in the in the office. I think it was yesterday, wasn't it? You're like I get up in the morning and you counsel with Holy Spirit, get your game plan, your your he he fills in your day planner. Sure does. And if something doesn't line up against or doesn't line up according to what God has planned for your day then you don't do it Amen. you don't waste the energy we get so caught up in the busy stuff in construction we just you know if we don't really have something for them to do we just give them busy work go sweep go organize go do something just to be busy we need to be careful of that too don't get caught up in the busy work of being a Christian Thank you, Lord. do what your day planner says to do God being your organizer and your planner Thank you, Lord. anyway so if you're, if you're here today and you want more compassion if you, maybe you have plenty wow lay hands on me <laughs> But seriously, if you want more compassion and you want God to touch the places where you're locked up, just just come and make an altar up here right where you're at. Just come on up and just as an act of, Lord, here I am, I surrender. And if you are in here and you, you need to rededicate your life or you need to be born again, we'll lead you in a prayer to pray if you need Jesus. But just lift your hands if you need more compassion father you see our hands so father first thing we do we repent father god for uh, shutting up our bowels of compassion Father, we repent for that. Just right where you're at. See, I can't repent for you. So just tell the Lord you're sorry to forgive you because we've judged people because we've been offended. Maybe we've been betrayed or hurt and we've held that against uh, other people groups. So, Father, we repent for that right now in the name of Jesus. I ask, Father, that you would just cleanse us and wash us right now. Father, forgive us for not having self-compassion. Father God, where we don't even think we have anything to give, Father, we repent for that. Father, because we house your spirit, you have put your spirit within us, and we have much to give. That's like saying that God is not enough. 
Mahasata. So we repent right now for not loving ourselves, Father. We repent, Father, for not loving other people. And we ask, Father, for a fresh right now, a fresh that the spirit of compassion would fall fresh on your people. Right now, right now. Come, Holy Spirit. I ask that you would wash over our eyes. Father, we've been evil in our sight. Open our ear gate to hear you when you speak. Father, we repent if we have not uh, listened to the leading of the Holy Spirit in times past. Father, give us the grace, Holy Spirit, to move when you speak. Give us the grace, Holy Spirit, to move when you speak. Because behind your voice is power. Behind the voice of Holy Spirit is power. Right now, right now, fall Holy Spirit. Touch your people. And there might be those, Father, that are watching that have never received Jesus. And the Bible says if you confess with your mouth, you believe in your heart that Jesus is the Son of God, that He died, that He rose again, you can be saved. So everyone that calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So I thank you for convicting us today. I thank you, Father, that we're we're being drawn. We will not be a, we will not be known as a hard people. Father, we humble ourselves today. We will not be known as a hard, mean people. The love and the compassion of Christ flows out of this house. I thank you for the compassion to win souls. I thank you for the compassion to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I thank you, Father, even now. Let them feel the healing power in their hands right now. 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 Right now.